Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, February 3rd. Oh, my goodness. In fact, that just reminds me, I think tomorrow is my brother's birthday. So he's trying to catch up. Anyway, so good to see all of you. We've had some exciting times here lately in Winston-Salem, um, less than about five miles away from here. There was a fertilizer plant. I didn't even realize it was there. It was near shopping areas and um, it caught fire. And so, so far it hasn't exploded. If it had exploded because it had 600, no wait, 6,000 tons of fertilizer on hand. I, I've got that. I've got the amount wrong. Uh, 600 tons. I forget. But anyway, if it exploded, it would have been the largest explosion in the United States. So we're very, very happy. It so far hasn't. And we've had a misty rain, which has slowed the fire down, thank goodness. And it's slightly reduced our chance of any explosions. So we're holding tight. But they've evacuated out a good mile perimeter. And Wake Forest University, which is right down the road, has closed and probably will still be closed tomorrow. So whose birthday is it? So whose birthday? I got to figure that out. Now you got me curious. Oh, are you talking about maybe Mark? Because uh, his was back in August. But that was sweet. I saw your note. So anyway, today we thought, well, if it rains, it'll knock the fumes down. Because, in fact, I'm curious as to see if we'll see. Hi, Annette. I'm cur There's Polly. Polly lives towards Clemens. And yesterday they had a purple air quality warning. I didn't know there was something beyond red. Yes, there is purple. And uh, the wind was blowing just perfectly. So today it was foggy, but I'm wondering how much of that is smoke? How much is fog? There's Kaz Flo. Hi, sweetheart. Let me grab a tissue real quick. I need to clean off my glasses. And I am so excited to visit with you tonight and show you what I'm working on, okay? And, you know, I, I just wanted to tell you, so I got ready to start up the computer, to turn the camera on, and I see your chat, and my heart just kind of did a pity pat. It was like, oh, they're here. You don't know what y'all do for me. And, in fact, I do want to tell you, oh, there's Miss Regal Rose. Happy birthday, darling. And uh, i got to tell you, when I came back from the supposed Myrtle Beach, quilt, Myrtle Beach quilt party in class that I didn't really go to, I stayed in the room and sewed because I was too afraid of COVID, I came home and I just had a hard time settling back in. I love being away and having some quiet time. But I think staying separate, segregated, I think it bothered me. And, you know, I did what was best for my health. And that was my choice to make. And around here, I think Polly can tell you that we've had our, this last January, there were 68 deaths from COVID in this county that we know of. And we still have high numbers. And I'm just not willing to take a chance. But I told Mark, I finally realized I've been so sleepy. I haven't really been creating. And I finally realized, you know what? I got a little depressed. So I don't know why I tell you. I think just... Because I wonder sometimes if I feel this way, maybe others feel that way. And maybe knowing I'm a usually pretty happy person, but I do suffer from depression. And usually it is very well medicated and I do pretty well. 
But you know what? What we've been going through for the last two years has no precedence. It is a very, very tough thing on all of us. And I just want you to all understand that it's okay if you feel lost sometimes. I told Mark, I just wanted to sleep all the time. I had, I would get up and instead of doing something, I'd go sit on the couch and fall asleep. And I finally realized that's what it was. And just saying it to myself and admitting it and realizing it, it was like it helped lift the fog. So I want to be here for y'all. Y'all are always here for me. You're a wonderful group. And we're in this together. And I love that we're here for each other. And we all understand none of us pass judgment. And it's a tough time we're going through. It is, it's really, really tricky. You know, we all had things. Winter. I know. We're going through winter at the same time. And I used to go to the movies. That was the thing I did just for me. And I would go during the day when hardly anyone was there. And I would get a big thing of popcorn. And I would just sit there. And you sit in the dark. And it's like anything that's on the screen is the world you're in for that two hours. I can't do that anymore. Not until it's safer. So it gets kind of... It gets kind of tough. So that I just want to tell you, I'm feeling better. But if I've been just a little quiet and seeming tired lately, I finally realized what it was. And just realizing can really help. And then figuring out what can I do for me that will feed my soul and kind of bring me back. So I'm back as much as I know, but I'm still going to, I'm going to take good care of myself. So I, I hope you will too, because you mean everything to me. Let's see who is here today. Okay. Mary's here. Mary was the first person here. Way to go. Barbara Smith. Hi, sweetheart. Debbie's here. Cheryl Hogan. Hi, darling. Barbara Smith. Polly's here. I hope she's breathing okay. We've had a little trouble. What Mark says, he keeps saying, I'm tasting fertilizer. And today I finally had to go out. I had a prescription to get. And then my Michael's order, they were going to cancel the order. So I, I said, I've got to go out. But when I drove the direction uh, close, a little bit closer to the fire, my eyes burned and I started coughing. So it's not the best thing. And um, so it's, it's still there. And uh, it, it kind of put us on the map. I don't know if I wanted that kind of attention, but it got us some attention. All right, let's see. Oh, and another problem is that the, the factory was built 80, 90 years ago, and so they didn't have some of the safeguards in place. Things were grandfathered in, so they didn't have a sprinkler system and all these different things that would have made it easier to fight the fire. It has been so dangerous because of the amount of, of nitrogen that's such an explosive that they've had to, they had, now I don't know how they did this, but they have an unmanned fire truck that goes in and hoses the fire. I want to see that. That is really cool. So, <laughs> but if you're curious on our group's IO, I put a video of it. And let me tell you, I, you know, all around the state, down south to Lexington, west to least Statesville. So, okay, let's see who else. Annette Parsons, how good to see you. There's my Marsha. She's such a cutie. And let's see. Uh, Cass, Cass is our newest member. Cass, I hope you got the invitation and you went ahead and signed in. I'll be checking pretty soon. And it is so nice to see Regal Rose. And I'm so tickled you get to participate live because we love chatting. Yes, and think Polly was talking about we still don't dine in restaurants. I, I understand. And takeout's not the same. What we're realizing is it's not healthy to be cut off from people. And uh, sometimes I think, well, I kind of like Mark and I kind of tucked in here together. But I think it kind of gets to you a little. So, 
You know, we're going to do the best we can, aren't we? All right. Your daughter and her family had COVID this week. Oh, so they must. Yep, they had vaccinations. Good for them. That makes all the difference. I was reading an article the other day where, where someone said, well, why get vaccinated if you're still going to catch the COVID? Well, because you don't want to die. And 93% of the people who are dying are people who've not been vaccinated. So, and that other 7%, that's people who maybe haven't been fully vaccinated or weren't boosted. So, get a vaccination. It works. We can stop this. So, it's the time is gone. We're not going to be polite. It's like, come on, people. We want you to stay alive. Okay? Let's have you stay alive. Um, oh, well, let me tell you this one thing. Do you remember a, a, a cop? in the Washington State Police Department, and it was like a month or two ago, he said he was quitting after 22 years because he refused to get a vaccination, that it was his decision to make. And then he said, and Governor Inslee, you can kiss my... Mm. Well, guess what? He died this week from COVID. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. More cops have died from COVID than have died from any kind of violence on the job. Many more. That's the truth. Believe it or don't, but that's the truth. So come on, people, if you care about yourself, you care about your neighbors, you care about policemen, first responders, get help. Get vaccinated. I can tell you, I've had three shots and they were easy. Easy, easy. So, all right, that's enough. I will step off the soapbox now. But anyway, but I'm so glad that they're feeling better. So, and people like Polly and I, we want to get back to normal life. So the sooner we all get vaccinated, the sooner we can get back out in the world. Please. <laughs> Luckily, we're really close to having these our young children be able to get vaccinated. That's going to be wonderful because the super spreaders can be children going to school and everything. You know, they go between mom and dad and grandpa and school everywhere, you know. So anyway, but we're going to get healthy. We're going to get back out in the world. So the fire right now is still going. Um, I was very careful. I did go out. I wore a mask. They only had headaches and scratchy throat. Okay. That is, see, that's the difference between being vaccinated and not. And, uh, you know, hello, there's a lot of things that we do that we trust. In fact, our hospital here, a man, a 38-year-old man, he was a former veteran, said he's not going to get vaccinated. He's living free and he's dying, going to die free. They had to take him off the transplant plant list. He has been, he's 38, he's had five heart attacks, he... Um, his last, his kidneys are down to 4%. He's on three times a week dialysis, but he won't get a vaccination. Well, I understand what the hospital's policy is. Kidneys are very hard to come, come by. And when you get a transplant, you have, you have no immunity left. They give you Im immunosuppressants so that you won't reject the kidney. Well, if you have no um, immune, immune system anymore, how can you even think to fight COVID? So that's the rule. And it's sad, but now, you know, what can you do? Cass's message. Oh, I will send it to you again. Let me write this down, Miss Cass, because I sent it right to you. So Cass, a new in invitation. Okay. And thank you to the people who requested my pattern. I love sharing these patterns. It gives me so much joy. So, and we're going to get ready and start on this today. And I was hoping to see Jody. If Jody comes in, tell me. I want to know how her finger's doing. She cut into her fingernail with the rotary cutter. So I want to know how she is. That's not a good thing. Ouch. But I hope everybody else is Happy, thank you, Miss Polly, for, in fact, does anybody feel like acting as moderator tonight? If you do, let me know on here, and I'll click you as a moderator. That really helps, because <laughs> when I'm sitting here jabbering away, it's hard for me to stay focused. So, 
I have patterns for this cool quilt. I have my fabric picked out. Um, one thing I'm trying, I don't know if it's going to work yet, but I have seen these. And what this is, it's a porcelain knob. There's Carol. Okay, great. Carol's in charge. So, and she's, she is sharp, sharp, sharp. But I've got a porcelain knob and I use super glue and a piece of wood to fill in in between. Use super glue and I'm hoping to make a, hold on, I'm going to show you. Because I've seen these and I wanted to do this. And I finally said, let's do it. There's Pad Fry. It's so good to see you. But what you do is you can like wet this, put it on the ruler, and it, then it helps you hold the ruler. So if you have any of these cute little porcelain or plastic knobs, see if you can, whoops, make sure you put water on it so it'll stick good. Because I just kind of like that. But... I'm excited to try this because especially when you're using a two or three or four inch little square ruler, it's hard to hold on to those puppies. So, hey, middle end, nice to see you again. So I just, I filled in the whole of, of the, what is this called again? <laughs> anyway, I filled in the whole of this. I put super glue. We'll see if it works. If not, I will keep. You'd like to make that request. What request? Oh, boy, I must have missed that one. Oh, good. Oh, you bought yours already done? Yeah, the last one, I I, I should have gotten them. Um, Tooltron had them one time for like $2. And I was too cheap to buy it. Now they're like seven, six or $7. But I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to Tooltron and I'll buy theirs. <laughs> so, but those are, are can be really helpful. I'm sorry I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, but I think it was from going out today to get my prescription and to go to Michael's. And let me tell you, I told Michael's today on the phone, I said, I want to thank you for your curbside pickup because I've been too afraid to go out. And because of your, your business program, the curbside pickup, it's allowed me to keep creating. And now I love Michael's. It's so funny, before the before COVID hit, I rarely went to Michael's. Now it's my go-to place. So, and you know, Joanne's has been wonderful too. So Marcia says your sister used, oh yes, because that's where Midlin lives. M Midlin, Midlin, that's a pretty name, hon. All right, so let's look at what we're doing over here, and then I'll show you. We'll work on this a little bit, and then I'll show you what I ordered from Michael's. Okay, let me turn off this fan. It is freezing me out. I had a heater on here, and it got too warm, so I turned on a fan, and then it got too cold. And you notice how I do that with my toes. My mother used to say I had monkey toes, and I do. I can open kitchen cabinets still to this day with my toes. <laughs> All right. So this is what I have I have been doing until y'all came. I, whoops, let me lower this down just a little. Okay. Now, you're probably, ooh, this makes it hard for y'all to see. Let me try a couple things. Well, I'm not sure that's going to help. But what I'm trying to show you is... I'm trying to show you my light box. This fabric, you can see that not there's no real design here because I haven't yet drawn it, but here I have. And when I sent out these drawings, I made sure to do them to do the branches in better, really to try to help make it easier. For anybody who wanted, Gran is here. Gran, I hope you've had a chance to watch, sweetie. Um, because I found your wonderful pictures on the site. So since Christmas, each week we've been showing Gran's beautiful embroidery. So you're really, Gran, um, Alexis, you're getting really good, hon. Really, really good at it. And some of us are doing an Alex Anderson hand embroidery 
thing, and we're, I'm looking at yours going, if I could embroider like her, I'd have it made working on this special project. Okay, so anyway, if you don't have, this is an inexpensive light box I bought used from someone who didn't want it. You did, oh, you didn't notice every week I've been showing. I've got two of your photos still left up, but I was showing your, your Linux spice boxes and your embroideries because you're really a talented hand embroiderer. So anyway, this is a six page pattern and I'll show you the back backwards like this. And what I've done is when you use this golden threads paper it really helps to put white paper behind it if you're going to make a copy of it so if you ever buy some of this golden threads quilting paper and you want to go okay i've got this made now how do i print it then put a piece of white paper under it, it makes it real easy to see so if any of you got my copies of the pattern that I shared with you, you should be able to see it very closely. Here are the page lines, and then I made these little, let me see if I can show it to you. I made these little marks across, so it'll help you line up the pages, but I don't think you'll have much trouble, and each page is numbered. Now, this is upside down, of course, because I've got it pinned on my fabric, but each page is numbered. So you'll have to print six pages, then you can line them up and on the back, use clear tape if you want, whatever tape you have. Now, let's say you don't have any kind of light box. Like I told you, I paid only 15 for this, bought it used because the woman had bought a real fancy one. And uh, so this is pretty good, I like it. But if you don't have one of these, then go to a window during the daytime. Tape up your drawing, then tape the fabric to the window, and you'll be able to see when the sun's out um, to, to actually do the drawings. So, what did I put this? Hmm. Oh, this I added, and I put it on now because I'm going to put, put a few icicles. I'm going to use a... You use the window, Polly? That's perfect. Especially, oh, your husband? Yes, you know, remember how we talked about, okay, let's say you don't have one of these boxes. Well, you can take um, foam core board and make yourself a square box and then find something, a heavy plastic to put on top and then just put a little light underneath. So there's all kinds of ways. Now, if you want to get a nice light box, they have these new ones that people got for doing um, diamond painting. You can get them off of Amazon for like $35. So there's all kinds of ways. And when I put the light on, then over here where I haven't drawn yet, it shows, it shows what I want to draw onto this. Now, any of you who don't want to do this big of a project, this is 18 by 25. This is too big. Remember that thing. You've already got six pages, so you have six lines. I try to fold it into 16, but with these six, mm, find a way to fold them into a grid. Then take and fold your fabric into the same grid, and but the size you want to make it. So. Even though you've got a piece of paper this big with a design, if, if your fabric, let's say your fabric for this one page is this small, I'm going to show you how easy it is to resize it. All right, so what I'm going to do is pretend that this is this okay see these dark lines here and a dark line across the top so what i would do is here is this the house comes down if this is part it, it doesn't even go halfway so the house comes down like this and then like this 
and then here's the snow, and it comes along, and there's a window here, and there's a bigger window right over here at the edge, and then the roof goes along there. All right, so then keeping in this, then you know to put a tree here, and you know to put another tree here, You see how, see what you're doing? You're, whoops. Um, let me show you, let me see. Hold on. Let me turn it off a second. Sometimes, oops. Okay, let me pull this back over. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm pretending that this is this block right here. And I want to make it smaller. Okay, now let me see if I can get the light on here good enough. Come on, camera. Happy Thursday, Jody. How are you? Oh, boy. Level three ice. Oh, no. On generator. Oh, sweetie. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, please stay warm. I tell you. So, okay. So, we're back to this block. And then here is... Oh, I know what I have to do for you to see it. There. Okay. Now, I'm, 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 I'm smart. Really, really. Oops, we got somebody for Carol to zap out of there. And go ahead and block them because I can guarantee you that nobody that wants to be on here, huh? Thank you, Miss Carol. All right, so now you can't quite see the block, but it comes from about right here to about right here. So what you do is whatever you see in there, you see the house doesn't quite come halfway down. Okay, then you've got a fence here, so you want to put the fence post in, you want to put the little birdie in. This is the best way to resize something, okay? And, uh, yeah, can you believe it that even Miss Pat Fry got snow last weekend? So, and ours is just about melted now. We've had some still in the shade. So I'm just putting a fence here and the fence post, but this is how you do it so that if you want to make it smaller, you're reducing it. Then you can do the same thing to make something larger. You've got your grid system. You decide how big you want your other grid to, your new grid to be, and you take that like this is about the size of a piece of paper. If you want to make it double, you get that part of your fabric or pattern that's double, and you draw exactly what you see. So it's a way to keep things in perspective. You can make it bigger. Oh, no. Easy come, easy go, huh? Gosh, please. Man, Carol, way to go. You got it. All right. But how is... How is Jody's finger. We've been worried. I keep I keep thinking about her cutting that fingernail ooh, with her rotary cutter. All right. So now you know now hopefully that helps you. Oh, you sweet Jody. Oh, y'all are the best. I was telling them, Jody, that when I get on here and I see people in here chat chatting, it just makes me so happy. So, but I'm going to show you how I do this by laying it on the light box. And so you bring your tree down, start with your big things. Okay, lay out, lay out the big stuff. And then come back in and do the fill-ins. Because you, and I don't know if you can notice, but I've got pins everywhere pinning this together because drawing on this, I'm just drawing on it with a number two pencil, but drawing on it can kind of tug the fabric out of shape. So I'm being very careful, but I draw things on here. In it, you can draw the words like this is going to be a little pond, a little stream or creek. And I draw that on there so you'll know it's water. And I draw this side over here. 
And the thing about snow along the side of these creeks is you want it to look very pillowy. And because that's how it looks um, in nature. And that way it's very enjoyable. Okay. Oh, we got another one, Carol. I don't know if they're really from Eastern Europe or pretending to be, but they're a real pain. So, and they have not, they don't want to learn to quilt and never, ever, if you're on one of these sites and you see where somebody puts a strange site, never go that way. Your fingers on the men. Good, sweetie. Gosh, I felt so bad for you. Okay, so this is going to be a weeping willow tree. Now, you don't even have to draw all of this if you don't want to. It's, it can really help. But one thing you're going to have is once you put fabric on here, it's going to cover up some of these instructions. And so that's where you want to then keep the pattern handy. But this just helps you set it, get it kind of set up. But if you don't want to draw on it, you don't have to. You just have to make sure you put some markers on so that you know your basic orientation. You know where your water feature is, where your cabin is, where is your sky, the horizon line, all of that. Now... If you did not want to draw all of this, then I totally understand what you would do. Let me turn this off now. Move it out of the way. Okay. Hold on. Let me put this in the box because if I don't, it'll slide and fall and cause a problem. But I can't wait to show you the fabrics that I pulled out. Okay. Here we go. All right. So now I'm going to take the pattern. Whoops. I didn't have all the pins out. I'm going to take the pattern paper, which for me is this very nice um, golden threads paper. And I'll show you the roll of the Golden Threads paper just a little later in case you haven't seen us do this before. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to take the pattern and I'm going to show you something I did a little different on here. Um, once I had finished drawing this pattern the other day, there's always little things I look at and go, oh, I think I'd kind of like to do that differently. Oh, maybe I'd like to do that differently. So I will change it as I go. And feel free to do the same thing. Because a pattern is a suggestion. But you are the driver of this artwork. And so, all right. So now what I've done is I have pinned the top of the pattern to the fabric. And that way, I can lean it back like this, work on it, and pull this back down to see if I've placed things in the right area. See, my light box is, um, I like them big. I would love to get a new one because they're flat. This is a 12 by 18. And if I could, I'm going to save up and get a big flat one, which will be even easier to use. But 12 by 18, which is right nice. I don't think I'd much get anything smaller than that because honestly, you have to keep moving your work around too much. It's a mess. All right. So here is my muslin. I've got it pinned on. I can hold it back like that. And then work. Now, there's one thing I haven't done yet. And I'm going to want to take and starch this. I didn't want to do it yet. Because if I did, if I put the, what I have to do is I have to put interfacing. And 
the interfacing will give it body and you can work with it. The only problem about putting interfacing on too soon is if you do, then it's a little harder to see the pattern through the light box. So where is my interfacing? I had it over here, but now, huh, I don't see it. But I had it over here, so I'll have to find it. But anyway, that's what I would be doing next, is I would come in. And I just put starch on this, and I would starch the muslin. Just makes it easier to work on. Starch the muslin. Come in like this. Press it really, really good. And then press the fusible interfacing onto the back. All right. So that's the next step. Now, so I've got it drawn. I'll have it just a nice medium to lightweight fusible. I go and look for things. What can I find that might work? This would be great for smoke. Polly has been inspiring me lately with her use of cheesecloth and stuff, and this will go on last, but oops, I wasn't, I wasn't showing you, but this would be really good to show the smoke. It also would be good in some of the snow banks. And this is just a white tool. All right. Now, you won't believe how many fabrics I pull out. How many fabrics I pull out when I'm getting ready to do a landscape. And this is a landscape that's a, a snow total snow scene. Well, let me show you what I've pulled out and why. What fusible do you use? Anything I can get cheap enough. Pellon, any, any of those, any interfacing you would use if you were making a blouse and wanted to put it under the placket or under the collar, then you've got it. All right, so this can be, I'm going to have a wooded area over to the left with some little scrub trees and the snow, so that could be good. I could even use it for part of the siding. Look, when you look at a fabric, don't just look at one place of it. Look at how this is really bluey. What if you needed this for the light part, the sun shining on the cabin? Then you could use the dark part for the part of the cabin that's in a shadow. So I'm kind of just going to explain to you why I've pulled the fabrics I've pulled. Will that work? Um, I would use light or medium. I'm not sure I would use heavy because by the time you put all of these fabrics on, it would be really heavy. And then you're going to do thread painting and you're going to do quilting. And I think it would be too much for your machine. So light or medium. I prefer something a little closer to medium. All right. Now, whoops, let me move these off so I can kind of bring them over and show you. Okay, so I went and found some stone fabric because what I might do, you're welcome, sweetie, I might put some stone fabric as the base of this cabin, okay? So I got some stone fabric. Then, oh, this might be perfect for the siding on the cabin. So I pulled that out. I already showed you how I pulled this out, and it's got so many different colors. Even if I just wanted a little piece of this, because this is a collage landscape, even if I just want a little piece to look like snow, this could be a dark area of the cabin. It could also be the tree bark for some of these trees. So that's why I picked that. Another tree bark um, option or a stone foundation option, or chimney option, or even siding option. And I pull it all out because you won't know what you're going to do until you start doing it. Every step you take helps build to the next step. Here, again, I can cut this out and have it as one of my trees. I can cut out a section and have it behind the house for the woods. Anything like that. Then here is another wonderful tree bark fabric. 
I can use that for trees. It can be used on a real rustic part of the cabin as the siding or a deep shadow. Then I know that my snow is going to be white to blue to gray. So I pulled this out. And let's say you don't really have a gray you want. What does the back of the fabric look like? Let me pull this apart and look at the back. Because the front might not work, but the back might be just perfect. A real pale gray. So I pulled that out. Then here is another tree bark or a dark part of a chimney. I've kind of got a little wood storage out back that I might use this for. This is for chimney or trees because I've got different kinds of trees. All right. Now, here I've got pines. I might fussy cut some of this to put in the little ridge of pines in the background. Then I tried to get different dark colors of greens for the trees. Here is a good possibility of siding. If it's too distinct, then use that part. I might just do that. This might be just a little too bright for this. So use the back. Okay. Here are some brick. This could be for the foundation and the chimney. I'll see about that. If it's too bright, use the back. Okay. And here's another green for trees because I've got some spruces up close, and I've got some pines and spruces in the background. Here is another green. I love fabrics like this, because look at all the different shades. I mean, it goes from an avocado to a bright green. So greens are the fabrics. That's the color fabric I buy the most. When I do landscapes, there's always green in it. I love this with the tiny leaves, because this can be pines in the distance, and it gives that depth and texture. And I save every little scrap, because it doesn't take much, especially in a winter landscape. Look at this. This could I could use some of this for the spruces that are a little closer. The cabin looks 3D. That's what I try to make the cabin as realistic as possible. And look at this one. Isn't that wonderful? So this, when by showing you the fabrics that I love, it'll help you know picking out landscape fabrics is totally different than normal quilting that you do. Okay. So here's some more of that fake snow wood, whatever. Then I went to pick out some sky. Let me see where it is. I'm going to get a very pale blue. So I pulled out this. Could you use ink tents? Absolutely. That's exactly. And the ink tents, I'm going to definitely use in the sky. I'm going to use to give shadow and form and shape and distance. So this, I'm going to use just about anything. I'm going to do thread painting on this, thread sketching, ink tents. But see this? Isn't that a beautiful piece of sky? This is going to be a very pale, watery winter sky. Hi, Shelly Viper. Uh-oh, didn't see the reminder. I'm sorry, sweetie. So here is going to be the sky for this. And it's going to, this is the way I'm going to have it. Let me go ahead and tell you that. Okay. Skies can become lighter near the horizon, darker as you go up. This is going to be my sky. Now, I have fabric that I can kind of use to look like a sunset, but I might end up just going with my ink tints, and that way I can just use one fabric. All right. Now, here is, here is, I love ombres. Anytime you have a chance to buy ombres, do it. They are a landscaper's very best friend. Okay, this goes all the way from yellow to deep purple. 
I can take a little part of this, little parts of this, and make into clouds, like, you know, uh, I'll get into the bluer range of it to make part of the sunset, to do little clouds that are reflecting the sunset. So I grab this. But I'm hoping you're kind of paying attention because I'm giving you really good clues as if I love landscaping, what kind of fabric should I buy? That's one thing I miss about not being able to go to a quilt show because when you go to the quilt shows, you'll have vendors that have fat quarters of what they call landscape fabrics. And they are wonderful. That's where I got almost all of this. So I'll tell you what I'll do too. When I find a place that sells good landscape fabrics, especially if they're willing to sell it at less than a yard, I will put it on down below here. Because I'm going to need a few things. I love batiks are wonderful for landscapers now, even this one like what if i wanted part of this to be in the stream or the sky for the, the sunset but batiks are wonderful i would invest in batiks because the variation they give you oh my gosh that'll be instant snow then just some light blues then here is a piece of fabric I dyed that I consider to fail. But guess what? It's going to be great for the snow. Some little scraps from other projects I've done. Here is another piece of my hand dyed. And as you can see, I have lots to choose from. All right. Here is another piece. This was an ombre. And that is wonderful. A little bit of gray and white. And then this for a deeper tone of snow. The shadows are usually blue. But depending on the color of your sky, if you have a sunset, you might have yellow white shadows. More, you know, shadows that kind of tend to run more yellowish. So do you see, I, when I told you that a snow landscape is a whole lot more than white, I think you see it. Now, whoops, let me put these out of the way so I don't, uh, okay. Oh, and if you find a place that you can buy the mini comic boards, connecting threads doesn't carry them anymore. And I'm going to need a few more of those. So if you find a good source for the mini comic boards, these are what I fold my fabrics on to to store them in the closet. They are for people who collect magazines and comic books and they're archival, which means they're not acidic. So it's wonderful to fold your fabric on. But I need to get some. So then I went into my whites and creams and grays. And look at this. Do you see all of this? Isn't that wonderful? So that's going to be for part of my snow. And then good old white. Don't worry. I had planned on using good old white, but it, it won't be that much of it. That The white part, when you're doing a snow scene, the white should be where the sun is shining on it, where it's really bright. So, and then look at all of this. And you think, how could that work? But it does. This has got a little green tinge to it. So snow that's being reflected on by trees. Wonderful. All right. And then I got this, which has the little glisten. So if you want to have an area where the sun shines and you want the snow to be glistening, look at that. And then even this. Because this could be used on the ground near a clump of tiny trees, it'll look like a bunch of shadows on the snow. So that's where I am right now. And you see what I have pulled out. Here is a piece of my interfacing that I would show you. And see, it's not, 
it's not horribly thin, but it's not overly thick either. Because on here, you may have up to four layers of fabric. That's going to be pretty thick, and you want to be able to thread paint through all of this. But this has, see the little dots on there? That's diffusable. The part that's rough goes against the fabric. And then you just take it. You hold the iron down. I think it's usually about 10 to 15 seconds per area. You just hold it down. And you don't, you don't scrub iron this because, and you don't iron it too long. If you iron if you, any fusibles too long, they will migrate from the fusible to where they're all in the fabric and then no longer will the fusible stick. I don't know if you've ever had that problem. But now look, now you'll see the benefit. You can actually see the little line where the fusible is. And just look, it has a better feel. And that way you can do more gluing to it, more stitching on it. It's actually quite nice. So next week, I will have the fusing on this. I will have my big pieces laid out. I'll have my sky in. I'm going to start at the sky. I'm going to let me grab my sky fabric. I'm going to start with this first. I'm so glad I bought a, a whole, this is an ombre. And I bought a whole yard of this. I almost wish I'd bought even more. But I can show you real quick one thing I'm going to do to this. And that is I cut and tear off. I do a lot of tearing when I make my, my um, quilts because you get a perfectly smooth line. I mean, it's even... It tears on the perfect grain of the fabric. Sometimes the edges get a little wispy. Just give it a little press. It'll be fine. And, okay. This is going to have to be about to right here. So about four inches. All right. I'm going to... Tear it again and tear off this part. And I'll tell you why. Now I'm going to cut about five inches. You always want to have about an inch more in depth than you think you need because your fabrics have to overlap on each other. All right. So that's about that. Now I'll take it. And tear up here. All right. The only thing about tearing is you get little threads. But then you can save your threads for embellishing work. So now what I'm going to do, let me pull this down. Because I'm going to start at the top and then work my way down. Sometimes I start at the bottom, but most of the time I start at the top. And I want to thank Miss Judy Lilly. I, she got me started on landscapes. Years ago, I took a class from her. And she's just so talented. She's a watercolor painter. Very accomplished painter. And then she turned and took that training into, um, put it into fabric. And she does amazing things. She's still a painter, but she also does fabric. All right. So, my skyline is going to be right here. Look how this ombre is just perfect. So, let me press this again. I wish I don't have the... I can go ahead and just lay this in place, but I need to get my interfacing. And see how I ran it? Let me back up a little more. You'll see how I ran it a little long? That's fine. Because you can cut off and save the scraps for something that's run long really, really hard. You do not want to have to have 
a seam right in the middle, if you can help it. I mean, it's your quilt. You can do anything you want. But this way, it's going to cover this top few inches. And by having the light right let me see. By having the light right here, then I can also, it'll take the ink tints better to do a sunset. And then the darker sky will be at the top because this is going to be a little paler. Just remember, you're looking through all of that ozone, all of that hor horizon, the air, and it grays it, pales it down. And here, you're looking a little closer to the very top of the sky where it's nice and bright and blue. So I would put this on here, and I'm going to put it on with probably white glue. You can use a glue stick. You can use school glue, whatever makes you happy. You can use fusible if you wish. But I'm not a fan of fusible anymore because it gums up my needles. So I'm going to put this on. Then I'm going to come and probably start filling in my patches of snow with different kinds of whites. Do some just major blocking. A, one kind here, here, it'll probably be a little darker, a little darker yet. And so I'm going to do some blocking. I do all of my blocking. Then I come, I go from biggest to smaller. And after I finish the sky blocking, and the snow blocking, then I'll come in and do trees, then I'll come and do these trees, then I'll, once I've blocked all of this, then I will do the cabin. And I don't mind if, the, I don't try to fit the snow around the tree. I have the snow in here and then put the tree. And even if there's seams and stuff in the snow that I put on here, that is fine. And then the, the stars, like the cat pardon me the cabin and the trees all of that will go on top once i have the basic snow down i can still do little shadows and do little changes with the snow but i have some good basics here and then now you see when i start covering all this you see why it's good to have a copy of your pattern because then you can, if you get your trees cut out or your branches and you need to mark back. Let's say for these little branches, you're going to do thread painting. Well, you're going to need to mark where to do the thread painting. And you'll just put your pattern on there and you'll mark where you need it or put a light box underneath. That way this would go under it. But it just allows you to bring this back over and go, okay, my cabin is here. I'm going to probably, I might make this cabin separate and put it on as one unit. I haven't decided. Sometimes I build it on here. Sometimes I put it together off of here and then finally put it in place. And you can always make an extra copy of your pattern so you can cut out the actual dimensions of your cabin. So, and oh, the other thing I wanted to show you. On this, I had this, this part down really close to the bottom. I've decided to change that. I brought it up a little bit and made it bigger so it's right in front of your face. If it's little at the bottom, it's still far away. Now I'm going to have it like it's much closer to you because I want my cardinal to be amazing. And I wanted him to show. And you can see how much bigger he is from this little thing to now this big boy. So I just played with perspective and made it bigger and taller so it's right in front of you. It's like you're standing just on the other side of the fence looking at this scene. Okay? All right. Well, I think that is it for tonight and Sunday. I've got bunches of photos to show you. I've been getting snow photos from Miss Marsha. I've been getting photos from Charlene Lawson, from all kinds of people, from Jody, everyone. Send me your photos to our, whoops. And then I do want to, Miss Carol, I hope I haven't frozen. Hopefully I haven't. 
But I want to get Miss Carol to tell us if our time to quilt. Whoops. Got to put my glasses on. Our time to back up that quilt. Oh, 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 okay. When I, I'm sorry. This is what happens when I try to type and, and I'm trying to tell her. Miss Carol, are you doing another show Saturday? Because our ladies have been loving that Miss Carol has her own YouTube channel and she's been teaching us how she does the wonderful hand embroidered scrolls. This is something that Alexis might really be interested in. Like I told you, I'm going to either buy another one of these or use this, take off that, and I'm going to make a scroll that wraps around an antique bobbin. I think it'd be so cool. So, yes, she is. Okay, do you have your YouTube address you can type on here? People have been loving Miss Carol's show. Miss Carol is a true Renaissance woman. You've been watching them too. Yay. She's a, a, a Renaissance woman. She does lace making. She does painting. She does watercolor painting. She does fabric painting. She does embroidery. She. Oh, good. I'm glad. Then you got to see why I choose what I choose. Because I, I want to reach to you, out to you in a way to show you how easy this stuff really is. It's not very different than when you were five years old and took a crayon and took uh, scissors and construction paper and made yourself the most beautiful house in the world. You, it's still that now. It's just we're a little older and we can do it. I'm not going to say even prettier because nothing's prettier than a five-year-old's landscape. But it can be more sophisticated. How's that? So, but yes, please join Carol. You will learn something from her. Oh, good, Grand. I thought you would like her. And because um, Grand is, oh my God, Carol, you've seen some of Grand's hand embroidery. I've never seen anyone do a more beautiful satin stitch than Alexis. It's just hands down. So, um, yeah, it does take a while. And you know what you learn? If you listen to why I choose my fabrics, it will help you learn how to shop for them, too. And so that's important because you look for different things. You really do. And now when I look at fabric, I'm thinking through a landscaper's eyes. So I go, hmm, I don't have that peach. That peach is really good for sunrises and sunsets. I need that peach. Normally, I would never buy peach. Peach. <laughs> so there's just different ways. And uh, it, it really, really, really helps. Carol stays busy. Oh, my God. She's so talented. So if any of the rest of you do um, channels, please let me let me check out your work and, and give you a recommendation. I'm so proud. I think that the people in our group are the most talented people I've run into. So I couldn't be more proud of all of you. And I love promoting what you love. All right. I wanted to share. A little bit of sad news, and I knew it had to happen. I knew it had to happen, but you know, I, it's been a tough time with the pandemic and everything, and then I found out that my famous British soap opera that I've been watching since 1986, EastEnders, was going to be canceled. I, we were just on the year 2009, and BBC said, we're not selling it to America anymore. Well, there you go, Debbie. I think it's perfect. It gives you, it makes you a more interesting person. It expands your world. <laughs> but anyway, so I can watch modern EastEnders, but then I lose 11 years of a show I have been watching for 23 years. Okay, so that was some bad news. Nothing I can do about it. My second bad news it's bad news with a twist. Jenny Beyer, who is my guiding light when it comes to quilting and color and using light. I mean, she is the quilter of light. I'm going to tell you. She's retiring. She's 80 years old this past summer. And, you know, her husband passed away, I guess it was about two years ago. 
And so she downsized from having a brick and mortar store to a mail order. And now with the pandemic, she's saying, you know what? I'm ready to do what I want to do. She wants to travel. She wants to make quilts that she wants, not just that she's promoting for a fabric line. She wants to visit those wonderful grandbabies. And she said she's been trying to get her sewing room redone for 12 years, and it's still not finished. She loves gardening and everything. So I'm really sad because it's a passing of quite an era. I had quit. I had quit. Yeah, I had quit quilting for about 10 years in the 90s. And because I just couldn't get into pastels and sunbonnet sues. And some people love them, but it wasn't for me. Then I saw a Jenny Byer quilt called Moon Glow. It changed my life. The colors were vibrant and alive and exciting. And I said, I want to do that. And luckily, I lived in Southern Maryland, and she had a shop in Great Falls, Virginia. So it, within an hour and a half, I could be at her shop. And every year, at least, I planned to be at her shop. And I was honored enough to be able to attend her final um, symposium that she had for years. And I, <laughs> I, you know, what do you say to someone who has inspired you and given you skills that has gotten you through some dark days in life? who excites you to create and expand your world. But she well deserves this retirement, and I wish her well. And I'm just so thankful. A role model you won't believe, because she is the one you know, you hear about Tula Pink and you hear about Allison Glass and all these different people. They wouldn't be where they are if it weren't for Jenny Beyer. She's the first person that opened up the fabric making, the fabric design world to quilters and said, hey, we want more. We want better. And she kept pushing and kept contacting them and trying to get her foot in the door. And she also said, if you want my fabric patterns and my designs, you need to make better fabric. So she's amazing. And if you don't know her, I would check into her. If you have a chance to see her, um, they interviewed her on the quilt show, Alex Anderson, Ricky Timms, and she did a color lesson. And she's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. And she's one of these women. She was a pioneer in the quilting world. And I have such utter respect for her. So I'm, I'm sad to see her retiring, but I t definitely understand and will miss her. She says she has a few more fabric lines in the works, so they'll be out and they'll go to other quilt shows or quilt stores. Also, if you love Jenny Byer fabric like I do, right now she's offering 40% off at her JennyBeyer.com website, and um, I recommend you go check her out. Most of my, I have a Jenny Byer fabric in every single quilt I make. Not because I mean to, it's because I adore that fabric. And I will miss it when it's gone. I will miss it. It has a look. It has a feel. It has a reputation. It has gravitas. And so, thank you, Miss Jenny Byer. I wouldn't even be doing this YouTube if it hadn't been for her. And she has been a huge force, a huge influence in my life, and I'm forever grateful. All right, people. Oh, thank you, Debbie. So let me see. Oh, she passed away a few weeks ago. Oh, and tell her that um, 
Vodka and water spray will help get out the cigarette smell. But and if you want somebody to sell Jenny Buyer fabric too, you know where to find me. <laughs> I put in an order. I was I was so tempted to buy everything because it's like a panic of what do you mean she's going out of business? Out of business. But I was like, no, Deb, you've got a plan to cut down the amount of fabric. So it's better to buy what I know I'm actually going to make and use. So you'll see when my order gets in in a few weeks, I'll show you. I mean, it's so designed for landscape quilting and art quilting. All right, everyone. But everything on our site is 40% off. So go check it out. Don't get carried away, though. You know, we'll, we'll manage. We'll carry on without her. And uh, I wish for her all wonderful things. Thank you for joining me tonight. And um, y'all are all wonderful. If you don't belong to our um, group SIO, send me a shoot me an email to our time to quilt at twc.com. And I'll make sure that we invite you. And if you want the, any of my patterns, please just say, I'd love your new snow landscape. And I will send it right to you by email. You can print it out and you'll be set. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for making my day so special. And keeping me on my toes because y'all are good. Let me tell you. Take care. Don't forget, let's look for Miss Carol this Saturday morning. Bye-bye, everybody. Yeah, go landscape fabric shopping. Now you know what to look for. And I, oh, just another real quick thing. I wouldn't want to buy fabric that had a cabin on it and cut that cabin out and put it on this. I like to, that's too easy. I want a little more challenging. I want it to give me the look of it, but I want to do the work to make the magic happen. So just remember that. Don't go too realistic. Leave a little room for your handwork. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Take good care of yourself. Stay warm, Jody. Take care. You are the best. Bye-bye, everyone.